Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns with one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Leda was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request. Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is my 
my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be. A reading from the book of Revelation. I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter. Jesus was walking in the temple, in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. and They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one shall snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. pray. Lord, grant that your word may be preached in truth and received with joy. Amen. How long will you keep us in suspense? That was the question that the people had for Jesus in the temple that Sunday, or that Sabbath. Tell us plainly, they said, how long will you keep us in suspense? Now, we know the sound of that tune, I suspect, pretty well. We're getting to know it a little bit better every Sunday. How long will a diocese keep us in suspense? Tell us plainly, who's going to be our new priest? Who's going to be our new rector? Who's going to lead this congregation? Who will be shepherd over this flock? Well, it takes a while. You've been told that. And I don't have the answer, of course. I'm not even part of that organization. How long? Why do you keep us in suspense? Let's get on. We're tired of the suspense already. Suspense is one of those things that's, that's all right in a novel or in a movie. It's something that's kind of nice on a TV show, a little bit nice in a a, a sports event or maybe in a horse race. Wow, did you see that? Nobody saw that coming. But most of the time, we don't like it in in real life. We get a little, little anxious about suspense. When I was a child and somebody says, I've got a surprise for you. I got all excited. I couldn't wait to find out. Somewhere between there and now, it got to be whenever somebody says, I've got a surprise for you. I thought, I better start to run. This is not going to be good. When I was a child, all of my surprises, I think without exception, were good, happy surprises. As an adult, you seldom get a happy surprise. When the phone rings, it's never somebody said, I got something I want to do for you. I got something to bring to you. Or you've won something or you get something. It's always, what do you need? What do you need? I almost get the fence that that's the way you answer the phone. Nobody calls unless they're looking for something. Crowds in the temple that day were getting anxious. They were hearing murmurings about Jesus. They had heard some his teachings They were getting to to know a little bit about him. They had heard rumors that this might be the Messiah. And so they thought, let's corner him and let's ask him straight out. Yes or no question. Just give us a straight answer. Tell us plainly. No spin, just answer. Are you the Messiah? Jesus, if you watch through the whole scripture, does never give an answer. Straight answer to a question. 
So be careful about what you ask because you're not going to get the answer that you're asking for. It's always a different answer. It's a surprise answer. Sometimes it's a story. Sometimes it's, why did you ask that question? But they said this, tell us plainly, are you the Messiah? He says, I have told you. And then he starts talking about sheep. Does that make sense? He says, I've told you. Now let me talk to you about sheep. This is a place where some people have suggested that it might be a good idea if Jesus had a wife who could say, honey, you're talking in circles again now. The people want something a little bit clearer. Uh, that sounds too much personal for me. Jesus says, you'll know, you'll know me by the works that I do in God's name. Watch what I do. You'll know me by the works that I'm doing in the name of God. And then you figure out whether I'm the Messiah or not. I've already told you that. What is it that you haven't understood, he says? Is it the healings? Is it the miracles? Is it the teachings? Where, where have I missed something here? Where have I not done something that was kind of Messiah-like? Why are you still asking me this foolish question? I can almost sense his frustration. It's almost as if he wants to say to the folks, where have you been? Have you not been paying attention? Have you not listened? Have you not watched? Maybe. Maybe it's because they weren't listening in the right way. My sheep hear my voice, he says. Perhaps you do not hear my voice because you are not some of my sheep. How does that strike you? Maybe you don't hear and understand because you're, you're not a part of this group. Maybe because you're not paying close attention. Listening to another shepherd, perhaps. Maybe you're not hearing the song you want to hear because you're listening to another station. Or maybe you're not hearing the song you ought to hear because you're listening to another station. Therein lies the problem for early questioners. And it is a major problem for us today. We hear and we see things and we process them in such incredibly opposite ways that it just boggles my mind. And I can't even imagine how God looks at us. We see the same identical event from the same point of view, from the same camera angle. And we come away from it calling it something exactly opposite depending on what we brought to that day, depending on what we brought to, to, to whatever it is that we see. Somehow, somehow, we all bring what it is that we want to hear, and we hear what we're expecting. We don't always hear what we are expecting or what we ought to hear. We hear what, what we're looking for. And if we don't hear what we're looking for, we dig it out somewhere. I wish I'd saved the article. It was in the Bristol paper the last two or three weeks. And it was a, a, a column that somebody had written, and they were talking about uh, a group of people, and I can't even get the context exactly right. But somebody was arguing with a lady about who ought to be involved in church and who ought to be kept out. And the person says to this woman, they said, oh, Jesus said this about everybody coming to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And when Jesus said that, he meant bring everybody in. And she said, well, Jesus was wrong. And the whole point was, if it does not agree with what you already believe, what do you do with it? Do you focus in some way and get your mind twisted around? And if you can do that with items on the news, with stories that you hear from other people, why is it a surprise that we can do it with God himself? Maybe it's because we expect Jesus to agree with us or to affirm our opinions. And maybe that's what we're looking for, and if we're looking for that, we're not going to hear the message. We're going to just tune it out a little bit more a little bit later. We don't hear because we're not listening. I think this text today is about the eyes and ears of faith. It's about how we come to see 
God at work in our lives today? What kind of ways do you see? How do you see God active in the world? It's been a while since we had those uh, angel shows on TV. Remember, Touched by an Angel? And was, uh, there were several of them that had different people that showed up as angels. They usually fixed flat tires and got people out of mud trouble and stuff like that. And I think that and the whole notion behind these was how is it that God always just shows up and pulls us out of a mess? Of course, when you compare that with angels in Scripture, they don't do that. They come and change people's lives in ways that people never expected, ever. How do you see God at work in your life? If you had to answer that question on a daily basis, I try to do it in prayer, and some days I'm not very well all versed in it, but I try to do it myself. To think back and say, where was God active in my life today? Where did I see the hand of God? Where did I feel the touch or the, or the word? Where did I feel that elbow in the ribs that says, you sure messed that up? Where did I, where did I miss? What did I have that day as a message from God? How did I follow? How did I trust? I'll tell you a little story. I have a neighbor that lives up on the hill, sort of off from where I live, probably a quarter to a half mile away. And this guy plays the bagpipes outside. When he first started, it was something hard to listen to. He's good now. He really is. And I think that it probably adds about $10,000 value to my home to be able to sit out on the back porch and listen to somebody playing the bagpipes up through the trees. He's good. Where I live, you can also hear the traffic on Interstate 81. You can hear the train coming down. You can hear all the neighbors with lawnmowers and weed eaters and whatever else is going on. So when I sit down on the back porch, there's a lot of stuff going on. But every so often in the evening, I'll hear that bagpipe sound. I'll hear a note or two. And I'll say, he's out there. And I'll listen a little more carefully. And the next thing you know, all I can hear is bagpipes. The rest of the sounds are still there. But I've become so focused on the bagpipe music that that's what I hear. I think the voice of God oftentimes could be just about like that. It's in with all the other noises and, and extraneous stuff that's going on. gets kind of lost. But if you very carefully pick up on it, you can manage to hear it and hear it plainly. And sometimes what you hear is something that makes you feel like you're the most important person in the world. And other times what you hear reminds you that you're not. Reminds you that you're an important person in God's life, but you've got a long way to go in terms of being a follower. Maybe you've heard it happen. This is Mother's Day. We tell mother stories. In a crowded grocery store or something, and you hear this small voice says, Mom! Every mother in the store stops and looks. But there's one that knows whose child it is. There's one that knows that mom, or maybe other mom, that might be said. There's one that focuses on that because there's a connection already, because there's a, there's a feeling, there's a relationship. When that child says mom, one mom knows that's mine. That's mine. This is the one who discerns the voice. And so when Jesus says, my sheep follow the voice, they hear it above all sounds. They know it's me because it's a familiar voice and they're listening for it. And they hear it even above all the rest of the noise. Back to the idea that we expect Jesus to agree or affirm what we already believe. So I mentioned about angels. I'll also say about all of the prophets, the disciples. Seems like everybody else that gets called, whether it's in the Old Testament or the New, you really have to work hard, and I'm not sure that I've found it yet. You can work and see if you can find it. Is there a place where God calls somebody to do something that they really already wanted to do? But they were really already focused on, yeah, this is where I want to be. This is what I got in mind. 
does God ever call somebody to something that puts them in a place of honor? Or does God call people to a place that, that gives them a task? Calls them to do something that they had not intended to do. Calls them to change their life in a way that they had never expected to change it. Does God call us to what we want to be familiar? Or does God call us away from the familiar? Beware of the voice that calls you to something popular. Beware of the voice that calls you to do something that you want to do. Beware of the voice that agrees with you, that always agrees. It's probably not the voice of God. It probably belongs to somebody else. Jesus' call in this gospel lesson is a challenge. And when he gives you a gift, it comes with a task. I said to you a couple of weeks ago, I'm sure you remember it, I tell it on Mother's Day. My mother had a comment that she made from time to time, usually around mealtime or sometime when I was in the way. And she'd say, make yourself useful and not just ornamental. I think I said that here. Maybe said it somewhere else. Make yourself useful and not just ornamental. And usually she'd hand me a dish towel or a broom or something. It was a gift. But it was a gift that came with a task. It was a call that transformed me in to a, a servant, to a helper, instead of just an observer. I wasn't an ornament anymore. It's going to be useful. Do something if you're going to be around here. The word that we use sometimes is transformative. It transforms you. It makes you become somebody else. And I think that's what Jesus was getting at here, about transformation. When you become a follower of Jesus the Christ, you are transformed, changed into something else. You listen in a different way, you watch in a different way, you speak in a different way, and you act in a different way. Those people who follow Jesus, they hear his voice. They hear the sound of his voice. It's a voice that sometimes is a challenging voice. We've been, for the last couple of Sundays, and I think we do it for at least one or two more, I'm not working that far ahead, We've been dealing with shepherds and sheep, and it's pretty apropos that we're, as a congregation, in the process of finding a new shepherd, a new pastor, a new priest, a new rector of the church, someone who will be our, our leader. That, uh, that terminology is helpful. When a person is ordained into the priesthood, they are called to be a pastor. That word is used in the ordination service. That's the first call, to be a pastor, to be a shepherd, to help take care of the sheep. We're calling someone who will lead us, who will encourage us. Sometimes this person will chide us. Sometimes this person will push us. Sometimes this person will make us feel really good, and other times this person will make us question where we are. When we look into that process, my prayer is that we listen there for the voice of God who says, this is the one that I think ought to be called here. As the leader of this congregation at this time, it may be the most popular best preacher you've ever heard, or it may be somebody who barely gets by, but has some ideas that bring the congregation forward in a way that we never expected. It's a daunting and difficult task that you have here. And I can tell you from the other side, it's a daunting and difficult task if you're the one considering a call. Do I go to the place that has the biggest church, that pays the most money, has the biggest choir and the best choir director and all of this stuff? Or do I go somewhere else that they probably have very little to offer, but a lot of need? Pastors struggle with that. Priests do. Congregations struggle with it. Pray for wisdom. Pray for the guidance of the Spirit in this process. It's a daunting and difficult task because it's a difficult and daunting relationship. As in all things, God is there because, you know, the church is not yours. The church is not mine. 
The church doesn't belong to the bishop. This is Christ's church. It's God's church. God will be there with us. Listen for God's voice. Pray for God's wisdom. Pray for encouragement. Pray for discernment. And then trust in the Lord. Amen. Let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Mark, our bishop, and for all who serve in Christ's church, let us pray to the Lord. For those in authority and positions of leadership in our nation and our community, let us pray to the Lord. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, and those with special needs, especially Andy, Ruby, Kaylin, Shelby, Doug, Charlie, Ben, Willie, Shelley, Micah, Johnny, Harry, Alicia, Ben, June, Nedra, Hillary, Michael, Brenda, Mary, Jean, Henry, Kitty, Judd, Penny, Jan, Joyce, Robert, Denise, Anne, Maddie, Martha, Carol, and Pam. Let us pray to the Lord. For Seth, Joanne, Doug, Jim, Heather, Harper, Johnny, and Tracy, who are celebrating birthdays, and Candy and Chris, who are celebrating their wedding anniversary, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. 
for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all of the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Our Heavenly Father, we give thanks today for, for all of mothers, for those who give motherly care, for families, for those who are struggling, for those who rejoice. We pray especially this day that you would be with this congregation, that you give us wisdom and insight, discernment, to hear your voice as we process that, that time of calling a new priest and a new pastor for this congregation. Help us to see your hand in our lives in all places. This and all else that you see we need, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. of Emmanuel Congregation. I welcome all of you this morning. Always good to see you. Happy Mother's Day, if that is appropriate. If it's not, uh, that's okay too. Uh, we have our different traditions and at different places in our lives uh, we, we deal in different ways. Throughout this day, my sisters and I will be communicating back and forth with funny stories, most of them, about our mother. We do that every year at Mother's Day just to remind us of some of the happiness that was there, and some of the funny things that we can remember. I hope you have some kind of ritual that you can do to recognize mom on these days. Are there announcements that need to be made? Canon Mark Furlow will be with us next Sunday. Uh, make sure you get that word out. And tell him we want to know what's going on. How's that? Tell, tell us plainly. Who, who will be our, our pastor, our rector? No, I don't think we need to do that, but it's a, it's a pleasure to see you this morning. Other announcements? We, we continue with the Eucharist. <laughs>
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. By his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels, archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the world made, word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate in the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him, you have brought us out of error, into truth, out of sin, and into righteousness, out of death, and into life. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, According to his command, O oh Father, we remember his death, proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O oh Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and wine. We pray you, gracious God, Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by us by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, with him, and in him, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. the bread of heaven. So are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, for his table is set. All are welcome. I am the good shepherd. Alleluia. sheep know me. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Alleluia. Alleluia. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the Shepherd, Alleluia. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.